Hi, I'm Hannah Brown, and welcome to Better Tomorrow. My absolute favorite thing to do is have a heart-to-heart talk with my new friends and my best friends, where we sit down and talk about all the things like relationships and love, faith, and self-care. And of course, the little things as well, like the struggle to figure out what to eat tonight. All in all, I really want to ask, how am I better today than yesterday and bring artists, entrepreneurs, and friends along on the journey? So join me on the journey, will you? One of my friends in LA was like, I, your style is really getting better. And I was like, thank you so much. That means a lot to me. You have been, you have, I feel like that's been your goal for like the past two years. And like, you really know, but you've really like done it this past year. Like yeah. you, I, I would not, excuse me, not for two years, but I feel like last year you were like, I want to work on my style. And you, you yeah. did in 2023, well, but 2024 it's, It's blooming, blossoming. You're here. We're doing it. You're doing it. My word for 2024 is expand and style is included in that. Yes. Yes. Well, you're killing it. Thank you very much. And you look great. Don't (laughs) worry. Okay. Back to the dunks. Okay. Yeah. So Adam got me some like really cool dunks for Christmas and like for most people would be cool, but I don't think I'm a dunks person. I'll be honest with you. I don't think you're a dunks person either. Like I was in there. I was in Uncommon. Which, what is it called again? Uncommon Projects. What's it called? Is Actually, that what it's called? I don't know the Andrew? Band. You don't know that place? It's in Nashville? Uncommon something. Yes. It's like a place where they have all the cool shoes. Like you might like it. Oh, I would probably really like yeah, it. Yeah. It's in the mall. It's in the Green Hills Mall. Oh, we got to go. Come yeah. Like with us, all. Maybe I'm not. It's not probably not even on Common Projects. I don't know. Maybe we should look that up. <laughs> um, impossible Kicks. What is oh. Uncommon? <laughs> what is uncommon Projects. What is un- Uncommon <laughs> Projects? I don't know. Maybe maybe it's a future brand name for you. I think that's kind of a cool name. Uncommon Projects like sounds Well, legit. there's obviously Kristen Cavalieri's Uncommon James, but oh, like I didn't even connect those two. But like that's not what I was connecting. I was like, where I don't I have no idea. I have no idea. But it's called Impossible <laughs> Kicks. <laughs> and it's like I felt intimidated in there because it was so mm. cool. And I wanna be that way. But actually I I don't. I don't know. I'm not like a sneak. But I will wear these. These are cute. And these are with your style, I think. Yeah. Why are these, though? Why I'm wearing, like, mm-hmm. Adidas Sambas, but they're all, like, a neutral color. Like, kind of like a light eggshell and white. They're just basically white. <laughs> a little beige in there. But, like, why do <gasps> these work? Because okay. they're slimmer, maybe? No, I think, I think, I think when you wear dunks, you wear them like well you know and not that you can't wear a dunks well you can wear anything well but they're just not you're they're more edgy and you're more preppy in my opinion yeah I don't know like Adam was like you can wear them with what you're wearing right now and I was just wearing like black sweats and like a black sweat shirt and like a cool hat he was like wear it like that and I'm like just like this (laughs) I don't know. It's weird. He's like, and just wear jeans and like a blazer and you're dunked. And I'm like, yeah, I guess. But you're, you have a really clear vision of your style. Like, you know what you like and you know what you don't like. And you also, when I tell you like, okay, I think this is my thing. You're like, no, this isn't you. Yeah. So I think you know if they're for you or not. So there is one pair that I, 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 hmm. if they come like come back in store and they have them, I do want these because they're neutral basically Uh and like have a cool texture to them um but they only had one size and guess what freaking size it was either five or twelve freaking five and a half (laughs) you little small feet bitches always (laughs) if y'all have those five and a half feet give them to me yeah i want them jeez but i have classic size eight always sold out or always six hundred dollars same mine are like eight and a half but we were the same size mostly Remember with you? <laughs> okay, so Hannah came to Europe to visit me this summer. I was there for like two months. And um, she texted me. She was like, hey, I'm packing. Did you forget anything? Because I got there a few weeks before she did. 
She's like, did you forget anything? And I was like, yeah, I forgot sandals. And I was like, how did you forget sandals? Like any type of sandal. Like I brought no sandal. I only brought actually dunks. <laughs> <laughs> Which to me, I'm like dunks in the summer with your sundresses. Like maybe like there's like two sundresses you can do that with, but like you're in you're having a european summer you don't have any sandals so the way i packed was i was in paris i was in mallorca spain which is i should not have packed dunks for mallorca that was totally incorrect but i thought i'd be walking a lot like when you're in europe you walk so i wanted to have comfortable shoes anyway you brought me those sandals and i wore them the whole <laughs> I basically took them over. I wasn't the whole trip. You did, but I loved it. It was fine. Um, we hadn't even like, we just started going. Yeah, we did. But hi, y'all. <laughs> this is so hey. normal. Um, hi, y'all. Welcome back to Better Tomorrow. My best friend Nora's here. And we've been wanting to do a podcast together since the beginning of time. We actually like wanted to do it like fully together so that we're getting to like finally do this. Yeah, it's it's so great. Yeah. And not only is Dora like my bestie, but she also like has so much knowledge. She's a life coach. She actually, how we met is really funny because we met because she was my life coach. Um, but we just become like the best of best friends. The best of best. And we also like genuinely haven't seen each other in a few weeks. And so I feel like we just have to catch up on everything. So yeah. we're just going to do it with you guys. Cause like, I have so many questions. I walk in today and she's like, yeah, so I'm talking to this guy and I'm like, and she's telling Andrew and I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. So we have a lot to catch up on, unpack, yeah. talk about, it's so exciting. Um, but I'm just so excited. We finally are doing this. I know, same. Long time coming. I know. We kind of had busy life, like things changed. Yeah. 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 Um, what were we talking about? Uh, we were talking about dunks. <laughs> this is really yeah. important. So obviously, um, you're a dunks gal. You yeah. take them for a European summer. Yeah. Where I bring like five pairs of sandals yeah. and you have none and you have to wear some of yeah. mine. Yeah. So that's how it works. That's how, that's just how it is. It's kind of like our it's it's our friendship. In yeah. So that's the thing. I should just if I really need dunks for an outfit, I'll just you can borrow mine. I, I have a good classic yours. black pair. I threw out the pair. I threw out a, 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 a different pair. Oh, okay. That's he who must not be named gave me oh. one of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what I just want to start with because I walk in, you're talking about a guy. The last time, I, like what? What happened? Well, I think the last time we talked, I was like, yeah, I'm taking a break from dating. Yeah, because... <laughs> <laughs> because, because I, I can't even. Do you? Can I say can it? Say, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we can say yeah, you we went from dating it. like yeah. So you since you've been in Nashville. Wait, I don't even know <laughs> how to start this. Okay, so you guys, I moved to Nashville like you know, I don't even know how many months ago. Almost a year at this point. I think in like April, right? Like yeah. you moved like the April month of, yeah. of your birthday. Yeah. Like yeah, I'd, I just moved. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Nora. <laughs> <laughs> has had you've had such a crazy year yeah i've had a really hard our 2023 year. was a really hard year for yeah. nora like we both lived right down the street from each other in santa monica and she had like this you had like a sweet deal mm -hmm. um and we're there for a little bit longer than like you kept saying oh maybe i'll move maybe mm -hmm. i'm not because it was like this like beautiful like studio back house of this it really was like pretty a house, house yeah. of this like beautiful beautiful house like ugh, it was such a seal so it was i almost had like golden handcuffs because it was such an amazing house for a really good price. Mm -hmm. um, but I kept saying I wanted to travel, but I kept thinking I would wait to travel until I, meet my, I, until I meet my person. Yeah. And then long story short, oftentimes on the west side of LA, like near ocean cities, they um, there it's so moist in the air that houses end up getting black mold in the house. Yes. And the house I lived in, although it was beautiful and really nice, it was an older building and we found black mold in the back wall of my closet. And I had been really sick for about six months and I couldn't figure out why. I started getting a ton of hormonal acne. I stopped getting my period. I was getting major headaches. And every doctor I went to, I got an MRI. Everyone was like, your brain looks fine. Everything looks okay. Um, we think this is just stress. And so I stopped drinking coffee. I started praying more and meditating more. And... Um, we couldn't figure it out until we found the black mold in 
basically a place where my house cleaners couldn't clean. And so I thought it was just like a cobweb, but we couldn't <laughs> we couldn't clean it off. That was the funniest Ugh. thing when you told me. I remember you like calling me like, yeah, like I was like going through my stuff and there was just like this black stuff on <laughs> my shoes that wouldn't come off. And I'm like, oh. And she's like, yeah, it's just black all in my closet. I was like, oh my God. It was really bad like the numbers are because I've now that I've shared this on social media a lot of people have messaged me mm -hmm. like, I have had black mold I'm sick I have the same symptoms uh, but unfortunately my numbers were pretty astronomical and so whew, that was a journey but and it, they had to tear down the whole place they tore down my entire house I had to throw out everything I own it was it was very humbling it was very hard um to one day wake up and find out you're not only sick in your body but you have to throw out everything in your own home and you have to move out within two weeks so when that first happened it was really interesting my brain was like what the heck but my body felt so calm mm -hmm. because I had been praying about you wanted to, to travel and about yeah. traveling and I was like okay, God, we could have done this a little bit nicer, <laughs> but I see the message loud and clear. And I firmly, I believe like when, when God or whatever you spiritually believe is, is wanting to talk to you, I think at first it's like a little nudge and then it's like a, you know, maybe a little pebble and then a bigger rock and then it's a freaking boulder. And mine was a boulder. Yeah. It was a big, like time to get up, time to change, time to move. So long story short, I thought I was going to do this really cute travel year and I thought that – Which um, you did a travel summer. Yeah. I did Europe. I did yeah. Alaska. Went back to LA for a while. Then came to Nashville um, for Hannah's podcast launch party. Yes. And then secretly I knew Adam was proposing. So she didn't know that. But I was staying for that. So I was planning on staying for about a month and a half. Mm -hmm. And then I got really sick from the mold. I thought it would just like detox naturally. But – um, it didn't. I started getting like worse and worse. There was a point where <laughs> I was staying with Adam and Hannah and there was a point where Adam came up <laughs> upstairs into the guest room and he was like, Hey, like, I just wanted to make sure, like, are you comfortable here? Like, are we making you feel comfortable enough? And I know Hannah sent him up because Hannah probably knew I would like, I don't know. I, I was just saying, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. But having Adam come up, I knew it was more serious. And right when, he, right when he said that to me, I looked at him and I was like, Adam, I'm so comfortable. I'm just sick. And I started crying. Um, and then there was another point when you were like, I just want you to feel better. And I was yeah. like, Hannah, I feel bad that you feel bad that I feel bad, but I can't stop feeling bad. Like I am really sick. So mm -hmm. I've done this whole detox protocol. I'm working with this amazing doctor. I finally feel a lot better. I got my period back. My hormonal acne is basically gone. And it was really bad. Yeah. Um, and so I officially decided, I, I thought I was just going to stay in Nashville for like six months to heal. Yeah. And about a month ago, I was praying and thinking and like looking at other cities I might want to live in. And I was like, the Nashville feels like home. It's close Woo! to my family, <laughs> close to hand. Like it's, I've met a lot of really wonderful people for my work. Like it's, it's, it just feels like home. I am so proud of you. And I really it married, and I've told you this, like, I feel like you really went more full in to even Nashville than I have. Like you, but maybe you had to, to like, I, I think that's know, kind of our pattern. But that's also our pattern. That's our which, pattern. Hannah uh, always like kind of hesitates on things. And I like, <laughs> I will dive into water that I'm not sure even if it's water. And then sometimes <laughs> it is. And sometimes it's oil. And I'm like, oh, shit. We got to clean this up. Yeah, but you don't, like, you really have, like, fully done it. Like, there's so much in Nashville, like, oh, yeah, I've been here. I've done this. I'm like, what? <laughs> you've, like, got, you've, like, dated so many people. Oh, yeah, that's already. that. But that's how we got here. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, I've dated two guys since I've been here. Both of them have been really wonderful, but, and very, very, <laughs> very adamant about me. Like, very, like, they want to be with me. And that was cool at first until I got to know a couple, a couple major red flags. They were just polar opposites yeah. and yeah it's just really funny like the first guy like super like I would say like more southern very southern it was he was, would never wear dunks <laughs> ever he was so proud of his like vineyard vines style which was cool I was down I was <laughs> which like was, I'm yeah, awesome. yeah I was like okay cool I'm, I mean I just I'm happy for him to be happy about his vibe yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then to like this polar opposite guy who 
who was also really cool. Really cool. He was a cool guy. And I found some stuff out about him that was not ideal. <laughs> <laughs> So the first, the reason you broke up, yeah, why is this so share. funny, let's just share. is the reason that she broke up with the first guy to then end up with, with the second guy. Okay, so this is what happened. Got to Nashville. I was sick. I was like, ugh, I need to focus on healing. A few months into healing, I was starting to feel better. So I was like, you know what? Like, I had taken a full year off of dating because mm-hmm. I was in a really long-term relationship with a guy for about four years. And after you, I ended that relationship. But was, you went into, I was going to say, let's, let's not say you. It was, it was, it was like a year and a half, break up for three months, get back together for like six months, break up for a week, get back together for a year. Like it was that type of relationship, which sucked. And I could talk so much about how much I learned. Yeah. Because man, like when you're in it, you're in it and it's hard to see out of it. I always say a bottle can't see its own label. Yeah. So like when you're inside your own patterns, your own trauma bonds, your own triggers, it's hard to see it, but your best friend can see it. And Hannah saw it. Hannah does well, not I like my Well, I never met him. You never met him? I never met oh, him, I Nora. When we first met, you were going through, I was like, that going was like the, the breakup. final breakup. But that took a while. Yeah. The final countdown. Yeah. It, like and he that months. was like kind of his thing, though. He didn't like. Yeah. He was a very like focused on work and yeah. then like you. But that, was, like, that was one of our biggest problems. Yeah. It was like I was really playful and fun. And I was really attracted to the fact that he owned a really successful business and was really dedicated to it. Mm-hmm. But come on, like we need to have some fun. But when we met, you had just like broken up. Like yeah. the the breakup had happened. So yeah. that's why the back and forth was happening. But it wasn't yeah. like you never like were together long enough, I feel like, to bring in friends. Exactly. That when when we met, it was the we broke up, but then we'd be friends and we'd go on a walk and then like one thing led to another. Yeah. And then we'd like think everything was good for a month and then we'd see no, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. And then you went, you started dating like, <laughs> the van guy. That was, that was the dunks dude. So, okay. That so, was the dunks. Yeah. That's who, that's who gave me dunks. That's who gave you dunks. Yeah. Let's call him van guy. And then guy before him, boring guy, but long-term relationship guy. So long-term relationship guy was wonderful, but just super boring. Like our chemistry fill in the blanks with what that means. <laughs> well, he was unavailable. Yeah. He was emotionally unavailable. Um, and I, he's, he is avoidant. I am anxious. I have worked a lot on it to become a lot more secure. So emotionally we're really connected, but physically not connected at all. Mm -hmm. And after years I was like, I don't think I can, yeah, that is hard for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but so finally broke up with him finally, finally. And then like a few weeks later met this van life dude who was the exact opposite. Who like, (laughs) I was there the night she met. Oh yeah. And he actually hit on you first. He hit on me first. And I was like, he's attractive he's a cute guy just unique um yeah what would you say what is his what is his background he's costa rican is that a he's, i don't know <laughs> no no no. he's nicaraguan and um palestinian half half he's he's a very like good looking guy he's, he's i mean honestly he's hot yeah because he had that he had that bad he, boy swag he, oh like he drove a motorcycle we'd ride on his motorcycle all the time and like our chemistry was through the <laughs> my poor parents when they met him must have been shitting their pants. Oh. Like our daughter, what is she doing? I remember thinking we got we went to was it Delilah's or something? Was that where it was? <laughs> we went to Delilah. Like you met him at Delilah. Okay, it's so not me. No, no, like we don't ever go out. First of all, never. And we went out, and this guy's there, and his like whole friend group. Oh, remember his freaking friend group didn't buy us the freaking drink. No, no, his friend. Oh my, God. his friend was like, "What do you guys want to drink?" And like we walked in this club, like that's what you do. You expect men to buy you drinks that's just kind of how it <laughs> works and so we walk in and the first dude is like what do you guys want to drink like kind of hitting on us a little bit they're just talking small talk and more hitting on annie and and it was like tequila for everyone so he orders tequila he orders like eight shots of tequila at an expensive club and then walks away with us to pay for it and we were, annie was like no nah, uh. so then <laughs> Van Life guy came in and tried to like make the situation better. And I think Van Life guy probably paid for it, I would guess. I don't remember. I feel like I can't remember. I don't know. I don't remember. But I just remember being so pissed about that. I'm like, I don't even freaking want the tequila. Like, I'm not paying for this. <laughs> yeah, no. And then me and Van Life guy, he wanted to like keep hanging out that night. And I was like, no, I'm going home. But we ended up FaceTiming till four in the morning talking about 
everything under the sun. So that was a fun relationship. But I just, but you were like, yeah, I think I'm in love with him. Yeah. I was like, what? I really, I mean, and I was also like. Which I do think you fell for him. For well, I was sure. a fish out of water. I had yeah. been in a, like a dynamic with a guy who was just like so kind, so safe, but so not right for me for so long that it was, it just felt good to feel alive again in my heart, you know? Yeah. And then that was a wild ride. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he. <laughs> he what was are you about to say? Well, he freaking like just would do like shady stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the reason I broke up with him, I, I fell for him like head over heels. Like I really, I mean, who knows if that was lust or love, but I really fell for him. And then, yeah, he would do, he would like, like girls would text him and he'd kind of like hide it from me. And I was like, dude, like, uh, I didn't say dude. I said, van life man i want you to know that anyone that you've dated up until we, we became exclusive like i will never judge you for that mm -hmm. or shame you for that or hold that over your head like i'm actually grateful for those women that you were with because they like your experience with them brought you to me mm -hmm. and i think any relationship is kind of like a key into a door and like the right key has certain divots in it and so your past are the divots to us meeting like i'm really grateful for it but while we're exclusive, like, I do need you to be honest with me. I, I'm not down for this weird, shady, like, hiding stuff. Like, your body language is, like. You're just kind of, like, it was giving liar vibes. But well, I'm not, I don't want to call him that. But, yeah, kind of. No, he totally was. I think he's a pathological liar. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure. Who knows? But I cut that out pretty quick after that. Yeah. But that was, like, hot and heavy. So after yeah. that, you didn't so really After date. that, I kind of had a come to Jesus moment. I was like, okay, Nora, you have basically been in a relationship since you were 16. Um, like from one man to another, it's time for you to like, what do you, how do you say it? Like walk what you preach. Oh, um, live what you preach. I like that. That's definitely not the same. Um, it's walk what you talk. Yeah. Walk, talk right. what you walk. Is that it? Walk what you talk. Oh, walk the walk of what you talk. Don't, <laughs> don't just talk the talk, walk the walk. Walk the walk. I was like, it's basically time to like follow my own rules. Because for those of you that don't know, I was a professional matchmaker for five years in New York and LA to a lot of celebrities and CEOs and public figures. And then after I, honestly, after a few years of that, I was like, this is not the solution to my clients' problems. There's 8 billion people in the world. It's not a lack of matches. These clients actually need to know what their patterns are in relationships and how to learn how to love themselves, learn how to be authentic to themselves in relationship with others. And so I was like, okay, girl, we have been helping other people find love, get married. I have so many marriages I can't even like count. And also just women learning how to truly love themselves. It's time for you to learn how to truly love yourself. And it's time for you to learn how to be alone. Because I think part of learning how to love yourself is not needing someone to tell you they love you for you to feel good about yourself. So I took an entire year off of dating, which was really hard at first. Like it almost felt like I was like a kid in a candy shop when I would like go to the gym <laughs> and like see men. I was just like, oh my gosh, like he's so cute. I want to talk to him. But I, I, I really like men who would ask me out, I'd say in at first it was going to be six months. So I'd say like in six months I can mm -hmm. go out with you, but not now. And then it just ended up being longer because it honestly felt so good to find myself and be with myself and yeah, walk my walk. I think you were also just going through so much And then too. I was sick. Yeah. 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 So but then you got back yeah. to, it. <laughs> so then I got to it. And honestly, we still had some bumps. Uh, it was like when you were but saying they were that, different. It was like kind of di different. And you were a lot, it was a lot easier for you to cut them off yeah. and to like move forward. Yeah. But I think like after almost oh, like Van Life guy, <laughs> uh, we went to like Southern Man. Yes. And I then was Nashville. Because that was, yeah, here in Nashville, like your first like guy that you yeah. really liked. But I really liked him. I think you were, you're trying to figure out your pendulum swing. Yes. My dad said that to me yesterday. No way. Yes, he did. He was like, you kind of have a pattern. <laughs> because you went like boring guy, boring to like, man life. And then Southern really man southern. like is kind of going back to the pendulum. And then this next guy like also, so like you're, you're getting there, I think. Yeah. No, I, I mean, so I met this guy that I'm talking to last week yeah what the he's, crap he's like really in the middle so we'll see he's new but I told him he was like can I listen to the podcast and I was like I might talk about a British guy that I have a crush on so if you're okay with that okay wait, <laughs> and so he was like I would love that when, when did you meet 
we have not talked to each other it's because like five days. No, no, it's been like since week. like I mean we like no we really haven't talked since, since we haven't New seen New each other since oh, New well, Year's. Your, your grandpa, yeah, your dog. Have yeah, you we just that? had a no. I haven't. Um, I think we need to. Yeah. So I why I haven't really seen Nora is well first of all it's like the holidays but my grandfather and dog died on new year's eve (sighs) and like found out they were getting sick like a few days before and that was like right well hold on not my dog i found out was getting really sick a few days before but my grandfather has been sick like since before i got engaged um like got uh gosh like he's older or he was older. He was 87, but he like had like this like ulcer bust in his stomach. And then like, basically after that, like never was able to get up again. He also already had a hard time walking. So like once he got your dog, no, my, Oh, this is your grandpa, my grandpa. Oh my gosh. So that's why he was like in the nursing home. My mom had been, um, parents live in Tuscaloosa, but moved to like her small town where she's from Minto in Alabama, which is like 200 people. She moved there to be closer to him and like to be able to take care of like the house there. And, um, for like three months, she had not been home back to our house in Tuscaloosa. Mm. So, um, had Christmas up there, was able to see him a lot, which was great. Um, but you know, it was so sad to like see him not doing that great. And he just believed like, oh, if I could just walk, I'd be better. And it's like, you're not, he's mm. like, the sad part was like, he was never going to be able to probably yeah. walk again. Um, Ugh. And so like, he was already, it was hard to see that type of life. Like, yeah. It's, he, he doesn't it's have so much painful. of a life and he's so, he was in so much pain. So like had been preparing ourselves yeah. that it he probably wouldn't be around for a long time, but I didn't, ex- I, you know, you, death is so interesting because even when you know it's coming, it's still like shocking. I don't, Brene Brown talks about that. To yeah. People who, to people who get the phone call, whatever that phone call is, no matter if you're expecting the phone call or if it's a phone call, like, Hey, there was a car accident. And she asks these people, because I think so often, um, it's, it's interesting. Anytime we have a lot of joy, joy is also a really vulnerable feeling, mm-hmm. which is interesting because a lot of people don't realize that. People think like vulnerability is being open or honest or sharing about something you're insecure about. But having a lot of joy and a lot of happiness is also very vulnerable because very often right after you feel joy or happiness or just like so grateful or lucky to, ha- to love someone or any of those good feelings, oftentimes right after that emotion is fear of losing them. We literally watched a call to courage oh. um, two nights ago. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, she talked about this. I, yeah. I, was, I was actually there live. I'm such a Brene Brown like Oh my gosh. Fan. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so when she talks about this of like, okay, people who have gotten that phone call, like the phone call you got, I was with mm-hmm. you on New Year's Eve when you got it. Um, she asked them, is there anything you could have done to prepare yourself for this? And every single person says no. Like, Mm -hmm. even if you know it's coming, it still sucks. Yeah. That's just a hard, hard, hard experience. Yeah. And um, I'm so glad that I was able to spend the time with him before. But then, like, those few days before New Year's were really hard because it was like, oh, gosh, what's happening? And then also not knowing fully how I needed to show up for my mom Mm -hmm. in that um, way, like, way of, like, waiting for her to kind of and like not just her but like the family that was there like okay what do I need to do um and they were shocked how he just like even she was just shocked that it just like happened as kind of as quickly as it did but what sucked honestly like our dog our family golden retriever that we've that has been like the dog that like just like finished our family like died that morning before my grandfather and like you know you always want your dog to like comfort you yeah and so that was just like the dog really really got me it's a double whammy it was just a double whammy and so I I just haven't been like the best um mentally from that and then on top of that was I've started some like pretty intense therapy yeah you have like oh my (laughs) gosh but and I kind of was worried good about therapy. it. Good, for sure. But the therapist, you know, 
obviously we didn't know everything was going to happen and we had already planned, scheduled these sessions. And she was like, well, like you can be like, we could wait or you're at the bottom right now. So we know all you have is up. So why don't we just like do all the hard work right now since you're already here? Yeah. I was like, (laughs) so it has been really hard, but I've already learned so much um, I've been to a lot of therapy yeah. and a lot done a lot of work, mm-hmm. and I feel like this has been mm, it just I'm like just so tired like I've just been so tired yeah. of being in the like yeah. suck that I've been yeah. in for like a few years. You've been in it. I've been like really in it, but I think. Um, I've had a lot of people trying to help, but haven't really, I haven't really fully gotten the help that I needed. And I really do believe I'm getting like the help that I need right now. I think you are too. I think this therapist is really good. I also think that each, the only way passes through. Yeah. And And I think I, you're going through, I'm going through. I think I've been saying I've been going through, which I have, but I'll like toe in and then I'll be like, Oh, that's too much. I'm going to have to pull back. Yes. And then I'll get stable. I'm like, okay, I think I can go back into it now. And I'll go in. I'm like, whoa, that was really dark, really hard. I'll be in it. And then I I pull back out. And now I'm like committed to like, I'm just going to like feel all this. And she actually wanted me to watch a call to courage again, to talk specifically about what you were just talking Mm -hmm. about that. Like if you're so scared of your sadness, um, you can't feel, if you can't, won't allow yourself to feel like your full feelings of like sadness. You're never going to like feel the full yeah. feelings of joy. And totally. I feel like I've been like really scared of the sadness that yeah. I have because I do struggle with it, yeah. but I hate like admitting that. Yeah. But then I just get stuck in it. And so our biggest thing, which I haven't talked, I haven't really talked to you fully about, but like her being like, you have so much um, shame around your sadness. Oh, she's like, you have, that's like, wow. you have so much shame around being sad and feeling it wow. and what that means about you. And, um, I have a lot of stuff with my grandmother. Like she was like really, you know, really su- su- suicidal my mom's whole mm. life and, and how, what, what that did to how my mom views sadness. Yeah. And so then me being sad, like there's just a lot of shame in that. Yeah, that down. And then feeling like fear of like, Oh, I'm going to be like her. Like, oh, wow. And so I've, I've just struggled with that for a long time. And it was interesting. Like we started going to therapy for like couples therapy, mm-hmm. but it's been, um, really eye-opening yeah. and I'm trying to not like allow myself to be sad but like honestly like not trying to push it away and just being like right now I'm I've been pretty sad the past yeah two weeks probably my whole life but like the last two weeks with everything happening has been really freaking tough and I haven't ever known how to say like what I need and I'm like Oh, that's why I don't know. I don't know what I need. Yeah. But I'm trying to figure that out right now. And I'm doing a lot of just like intense work. So that's where I've been. (laughs) Which (laughs) is a good place to be. I guess. In terms of, well, because it's how you get past it. It's how I'm healing. I'm like totally like in it it right now. Um, But also. And it's taught me a lot about like, I wanted to talk to you about this because I was like, oh my gosh, like how much I've learned about like my friendships and stuff. And how thankful I am for you as a friend. Oh, and the I was people about that to say I, like, oh wait, I'm nervous. No, like, and the friends that have really like been there for me, like, wow, like, like I haven't always been the best friend as far as being able to communicate. And I, I've talked to my therapist about that. Of like, I just feel like I'm very avoidant, mm-hmm. very avoidant, um, and one of the things I realized is because I'm so ashamed of my sadness, Mm. um, sometimes I feel like I have to hide. And if you feel like you have to hide a certain part of yourself and that started like, well, and I've kind of pinpointed where that all started. Like from Mm. when I was younger, my parents used to fight a lot Mm. and like how that affected me and how that made me like draw back. Cause Mm. like 
if you're going to be friends and like share with someone, but you feel like you have to hide something, there's only a certain amount that you can actually like yeah. really get close and connect yeah. with the person. And I'm also not good at faking it. So like, no, I'm not going to fake it. No. So I'm just going to hide. Yeah. And you're that's why run. I'm so avoidant. Mm -hmm. But like with mm, friendships for me, because I'm so like the sadness is like there, but I'm so like embarrassed by it and feel like people don't want to see that or want to accept that. That's why I like, I, I'll pull away. Yeah. And you'll always say like, she's like, yeah, I haven't heard from you for a little while. So I knew it was probably like something was going on. And I do that because I'm like, oh, well, people don't want to be friends with somebody that is like, yeah, like sad or like, a bummer because I'll be like I don't like that energy in my life like I was in therapy like I don't want people around that in my life like I don't like that and she was like yeah you don't because you hate that part of yeah, yourself so exactly. much yeah that when you feel people like that you're like uh, -uh get away from yeah. me and so it just like all clicked of like oh wow this is why I do that or like why I don't let people in yeah. because I'm scared like if I let people in then I have to be like Oh yeah, you think I'm this one way, but I'm yeah. actually which then the whole other top of like public like life mm -hmm. and perception of like who I am and being like I am not that way at all. I actually have all these layers. And so I'm like I'll have like a great interaction with a friend or like a person I like. I'm like, "Oh, I think I could be friends with them," but I'm like, "Oh, I'm not actually going to let them be my friend though." Totally. It's so interesting. So like you being able to like stick through that and like us be able to like had these type of conversations we've had just, a lot of tough conversations about we do that. like i i remember the first time i called you out i was like i was so uncomfortable but i was like because we had become really close like uh, at that point i considered you one of considered you one of my best friends it was one of the first times that you really went cold yeah on me i, went, I forgot what i that can't was remember about. exactly when it was but it was i'm sure you were going through something yeah and i was like i don't know if i can be as close to her as I am right now, if she disappears like this, because that just brings up my shit of where I was going in my head. Like, did I say something that she didn't like? Yeah. Like, did I do something wrong? Like, um, but we've been really good at navig navigating those difficult conversations yeah. it, with a lot of love and a lot of kindness and a lot of safety. And every time you were like, no, this is about me, which was healing for me too, because then my anxious attachment would yeah. be like, Oh, all of these stories I was coming up around like, oh, did I do something wrong? Had nothing to do with me. This is about Hannah. And 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 then it was also me learning how, how to, because I when I hear that, then I'm like, well, I want to be able to support you. Like, I want to be able to come over when you're not feeling good. Mm -hmm. But also for me learning how to, how to have, um, how to accept you as you are. So like when you aren't doing well and you also don't want me to come over <laughs> to help you when you're not doing well. Yeah, I'm like, I'm just going to sit in this by myself. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I used to be like, well, why can't I help her? Like I would help any person that I know is like going through something hard, but accepting you and saying like, okay, she's going to go through her process and really giving it to God. Like that's like, it's like we, we think we're in control and we're just yeah. not like be there for a friend, like love your friend. I will always be there for you. And when you can't have people around you at that time, I'm like, okay, I trust that this is for her. She's learning from this. She's growing. She's supported. And I also trust that when you really do need me, you'll call. Yeah. And I think I'm trying right now learning. You really helped me see that pattern in myself, but then to really like figure out where it came from. It's like, oh, like I'm literally so ashamed of my sadness yeah. and I don't want, I want to hide that. But then, okay, this is how I've coped with that. And that's why pushing people away. But what do I actually need from people? Because I don't even know what. Yeah. That's why I don't say anything or don't want you to come over because I don't even know what I need. Yeah. So like I'm in the process of like, what do I need in these situations? Because probably being by myself and isolating and not answering anybody <laughs> and doing my spiral. Eating ice cream. Maybe not the best <laughs> way, but it's been the way that like I was able to serve you know, survive yeah. younger, like when I was younger, yeah. that's how I did that. Um, and I feel like there's a new way and I'm getting there. Yeah, I'm proud But I hand. think the way that our relationship and our friendship has worked because we've been able to at least like have the conversation of like. Have tough conversations. Yeah. And I feel like I've, from you've like had your ooh, patterns, ooh, I'll ooh, have conversations ooh. with you. No, Hannah, but, you will call me out in a really loving way. Yeah. Just 
actually the the biggest one we had from you talking to me about it was uh oh my gosh when, when was, was that? that it was in it was this past summer was it when spring. we were in no it was it was like january Portugal. last year oh i remember you said because you say it's like before conversation like be, it was it's like bc ac <laughs> <laughs> for 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 me personally because again i i have a lot of great friends but some of my friends like only give me positive love and they won't call out my shadow. They won't call out my shit. And Hannah does. And I also do that with you too. And I'm so grateful to not just have like a friend who's my shadow. Mm -hmm. I want a friend who's my mirror. Like I want a yeah. friend who's like, yo, did you see the way that's happening? And I know that the mirror is out of love. It's not mm -hmm. a mirror to hurt me or judge me um, or criticize me. It's a mirror because you love me so much. You're like, hey, like, I'm oh, yeah, I didn't know how this. to support you. Yeah, you, you literally said that to me. I was like, I don't know. Because as friends, I think we're, we want to be able to like get on board with whatever <laughs> is happening. Like, I'm like, I want you to be happy. So, like, if we're happy doing this, like, game on. Like, Dating van life, man. Yeah. Like, okay. Okay. No, you said that too. Cause I was like, I'm not quite sure. It was like the first red flag that came up and I decided to stay with him. Yeah. The first one. And Hannah was like, Okay, I am on board. Like we can do this, and I was like, okay. But then after a couple more red flags, it, I made my own decision to end. Things. Yeah. But that one was big. It was it was basically me saying I wanted to be a certain way, like show up in the world in a certain way, and I wasn't. Like I kept like not following through on my word, and um, you literally said to me, you said, I don't know how to. You said, I don't know if I can be – kind of same thing I said to you. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I can be this close to you when when you have this pattern. Like, it's hard for mm -hmm. me. You said, I don't know if I can support you and be as close to you when I see you living your life in a way that I know you don't want to live. It gives me chills. And it makes me emotional because, like, like you said, you're grateful for me. Hannah, I'm so grateful for you because mm. you you care that much about me that you had such an uncomfortable conversation and stood so strong – because you love me. Mm -hmm. I know that wasn't easy for you to do, but it truly No, because I avoided you for <laughs> yeah, a few yeah, days. Yeah, well, yeah, you avoided me for a, like yeah, like a couple yeah, a couple of days and I was like, "Where is Hannah?" Yeah, probably not just a couple of days, probably a couple of weeks. I was yeah. just like I knew I had something I had to talk yeah. to you about that would like but I didn't know how. How? Yeah. And then I we finally like had a conversation. Yeah. But from those two big conversations that we've had, like and we've, we've both closer. done our own work. Now we can still like in a loving way be like, oh, yeah. you're doing that yeah. thing. Yeah. Or oh, you're I know you're avoiding me and I know there's something going on, but I love you anyway. And I'm like, you just said <laughs> you wanted to be an astronaut, a pilot, and uh live in Italy. I don't know how you're gonna do all these things. <laughs> I think we should talk about that. We should figure out which one, but I love you. And, and it's yeah. And also like, what are you avoiding? Because yeah. like when I like my like you avoid kind of by isolation. I avoid by <laughs> <laughs> by jumping in, like by doing way too many things at once. Yeah. And being way too busy. And both of those, I remember my first coach, I, it was a career coach I worked with in New York. Um, it was when I was a matchmaker and I was trying to decide what I wanted to do next. And she helped me, like she totally changed my life. She opened up like this realization of that I could have a career in coaching. And it's just like, I love my job so much and I love my clients and so I'm super grateful for her. So she called me on my birthday last year and she was like, I hadn't heard from her in years. Like we worked together like when I was 24 or something. Um, but she called and she was like, how are you? And I was like, oh my gosh, her name's Becky. And I was like, Becky, you'll, you'll never guess. Like my business is really successful. Like I'm helping all these people and I love it and it's growing and it's expanding and this is what I'm doing next. And she was like, hmm. And I thought she'd just say like, congratulations, but she was quiet and she was like, do you mind if I ask you a question? And I said, yeah. And she said, what are you running from? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, ah, excuse me? Like everyone else has been like, yay, Nora. And she was like, this sounds like a lot. You haven't even taken a breath. And like you had one success and then you went to the next and then you went to the next. What are you running from? And I said, I mean, I immediately started crying and I was like, I don't know. And that night, it was my birthday in Angel's backyard. Mm -hmm. um, 
I, all my best friends had done all wonderful things for me. And I was so dissociated the whole time because I have such a hard time receiving. I used to. I was really good at giving, but it was so uncomfortable for me to receive love or compliments from friends or just like you guys made such a beautiful like array of food and we had the little teepee. I was so uncomfortable that whole night until everyone left. And then finally, the answer to that question of like, what are you running from? I felt this deep sadness, like really deep. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, I have not sat with this. Like, I don't know what this version of myself is to touch mm -hmm. this level of sadness. And so that was a big focus of mine was like, when the emotion comes, like feel it. Kind of like yeah. an orgasm. Like, <laughs> like you don't want to yeah. stop an orgasm from coming. Like, let it come, literally. <laughs> but same with sadness. Like Brene Brown says it takes 90 seconds yeah. to feel an emotion fully and then it passes. But most people spend a decade avoiding that emotion or mm -hmm. running away from that emotion or their whole life. And they'll avoid it by avoiding other people or traveling a lot or working a lot or what other drinking a lot, whatever mm -hmm. it is that helps them like not touch those emotions. But yeah, I think we kind of both have that sadness yeah. in different ways, but I'm really glad that we have like a friendship that we're both doing it. Yeah. It's like how hard I feel like I'm so grateful to have like, not only just you, but like a partner that's also doing that work for yeah. the first time. So like, if you have like, I have like my best friend and then my partner in life doing this. There's a lot of people that like want to do the work, but they have like no mm -hmm. support at all mm -hmm. and how hard mm -hmm. that is. I'm just so, I've been trying to work on gratitude. It's sometimes hard when you're like so deep in the sadness. Yeah. It's like, I'm sorry, like this gratitude journal is <laughs> not working. It is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I've been. I'm like, this gratitude journal is bullshit <laughs> right now. Okay. But I can see just like how grateful I am to be able to have like really solid friendships um, and then like a solid, like even though mine and Adam's relationship is not perfect, but like I have somebody I can look at that's also doing the work yeah. and is in it with me. Yeah. And a lot of people don't have that. Yeah. And for people listening, if you're like, oh, I am doing the work and I don't have support around me. There's so many people doing the work and that don't. Yeah. One, well, one thing that has always helped me is realizing that we don't attract what we want. We attract what we are. So if you're doing the work, you will eventually attract people who are doing the work. You'll eventually attract people who are open and vulnerable and have tough conversations so with their true. best friends and aren't just fake. Because I used to be very fake with my friendships. I was very much like, I mean, not that I'm proud of it. I was on autopilot. I didn't know anything else. I was such a people pleaser and people pleasers come from parent pleasers. I was such a parent pleaser. And that was my survival mechanism. I didn't know any better. I'm not judging myself for that at all. I'm loving my little girl that that used that to to keep me safe. And my friendships mirrored those same dynamics where I would just please my friends and tell them, like I remember one of my friends was like, you're gonna have wine, right? And like I like don't really love drinking. I've never really loved drinking, but I would just like have the wine because I wanted her to be happy. And it, I would eat the cheese, even though I'm lactose intolerant <laughs> because I wanted my friends to like be able to eat the cheese. Like that's crazy to, yeah. to, to do something for people that love you by hurting yourself in the process. And so when I finally woke up to my patterns with that, my friendships completely shifted mm -hmm. and that wasn't easy. That was really hard, but it didn't shift because I was judging them or they were judging me or I was thinking I was better or different. It, it was, it was just like, Hey, you like to live life that way. And I am actually learning if I'm being authentic myself, I like to not drink that much. And I like to read books and I like to do other things, but I had to do that journey of finding out who I was to know how I could show up authentically mm -hmm. in friendship. So for people listening who are like, Oh, I'm in, the, I'm in the shit. I'm in the messy middle and I'm all alone. The more you embrace who you really are and show the world who that is the more you're just without effort you're just going to attract people because mm -hmm. I didn't try to attract you like it wasn't like I was like hmm let me find a friend like no, it was yeah. just like okay I'm gonna stand up for who I am this is uncomfortable it's scary I feel lonely but I know there's eight billion people in the world I know there's other women out there who want to have safe kind supportive friendships um, and not judge me or not put me down or not make me feel small. Yeah. But we also like, that's like how it starts. Like you're going to start attracting different things, but also I just want to say like, we've both been working on this for a long time. Oh, wow. And we're just still we're here. We're still here. I think the journey's been fun. <laughs> I'm like, 
past me in a couple of months. <laughs> it's been fun. Um, wow, we got into like yeah, we got deep. We got deep, but I still haven't <laughs> found out about this guy. The British guy. The British the guy. British guy. I told you, I was like, I'm gonna take a break from dating. Like that was a lot. Like I just want to focus on my business and my life and just like loving life because when we love life, love comes to us, right? So did that, like was just focusing on myself. And then weirdly when my parents were in town and I was mm -hmm. like moving into the new building that I, I moved into and thinking about 2024 and thinking about really what I want. It's funny that I've been a matchmaker and as a coach, I help a lot of people in their relationship life as well as mainly their confidence and their, their relationship with themselves. Um, it's weird that I've never like myself prayed to God about what I want. Um, I have my clients do it. I have my clients write the list, everything. But it's so funny that I can help other people with things that sometimes are harder for mm -hmm. me. Um, and my parents were in town. I was like, I, I was just watching their love and seeing their love. And I was like, I want that. I claimed it. Like, I really want that. And I really want that in 2024. Mm -hmm. Other times I've said I want love. It's more kind of like a Barbie dream. Like, I want love. Woo. Like, but I wasn't grounded in it. I wasn't ready to receive it. I think I was actually afraid to receive real love. Um, but I, I said a prayer and I was like, God, like I give this to you. Like I can't, I'm not in control of this and I'm going to give this fully to you. And I said really what I'm hopeful for. And then that night I downloaded hinge and who knows, I've known this guy for a week. Like, <laughs> we really don't know, but I actually told him this story. Um, and I matched with him and he said the exact same thing. He's like, Nora, like I, like he actually went to a matchmaker um a few weeks ago and said and he was like you are everything I said I want oh that's so I know, sweet I know so like but we're also being very honest with each other like we've known each other literally for a week so it's cool like we're getting to know each other we have values that are really really similar um but we'll see where it goes okay so about him he is what do you want to know yeah I okay. want to know <laughs> Does he live here? Yeah, he lives. Dude, okay. he lives here. Like, Hannah, I'm, I thought you. I thought you were like talking to some no, guy. Like, no, actually, no, no, no. Like that's after. So Wait, after we oh met, God. like after our first date, I was like, what? "Well, you're going on a date." Yeah, no, we went on a date. I thought you were just talking on like. No, ah! that's when I texted you like, "Hey, I'm gonna be near your house. I can stop by after." I didn't say date because I didn't want. <laughs> I didn't want to like jinx myself. I guess so. I just was gonna stop by after to tell you, but. You didn't respond, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. um, I think I was in a my feeling right your feelings. Uh, I hate this. <laughs> and I understood that. So I was like, whatever. Yeah, probably so, was doing that exact thing. So yeah, I was literally thinking, okay, how am I in Nashville? And I match with a British man who We literally were talking about how much we love England. England. And he's so like his accent, ugh. It makes me melt. Oh my gosh. He's so, yeah, he's so cute. So he moved to Nashville three years ago. He's the CEO of a company and they expanded here. Um, so he's the CEO of the America division of the com company. Um, so yeah, he's in Nashville. He's like, I have a truck, like not really like me, but bought one in Nashville. I'm like, wow, that's so funny. And he's very spiritual. Like we talk, he's very into self-development. Um we already started a book club, <laughs> which also okay, sounds like going way too say. fast. Sounds like going way too fast, uh, but it was like playful. Like basically he was like, what are you doing? And I sent him a photo. I was like in my ba my bedtime routine as I take him up some salt bath and read. And I was reading the book that you told me to oh, read. Oh, have you liked it? I've loved it. It's so good. It's right? really good. Yeah. So I sent him a photo of that book and he, I was like, what are you doing? And he sent me a photo of his book. Like, he's re like there's just been a lot of interesting, I don't feel the spark like I felt with Van Life Guy or that I felt with basically both these guys in Nashville, yeah. I felt sparks with them. But oftentimes people say when you feel like it's extreme feelings, anxiety. it's your anxiety slash it's like your inner child and their inner child having a beautiful trauma bond. Mm -hmm. um, I don't feel that with him. I feel like I like him, like I, but I feel very calm with him, but not like crazy, not mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. I'm just like, yeah, he's really nice. And mm -hmm. we have like so much in common. So he sent me the book that he was reading and then we were talking about other books we want to read. And he was like, I don't know if this sounds silly, but like, and he kind of said it facetiously at first, like, should we start a book club? And I was like, what would be our first book? And then he, and this is so my love language. He sent me um, a list of like the 40 top new books of 2024. 
because he said, would you want nonfiction or fiction? So I like that he asked me questions that like, yeah. you know, and I was like, I think uh, nonfiction because I was reading a fiction. And then he sent me this list of 40 new nonfiction books and so many of them I was so excited about. So it's like number 14, number 12, number 22. And there was one on love by Anne Lamott, who's one of my favorite, um, actually our therapist, me and Hannah go to the same therapist. <laughs> yeah. Um, our therapist recommended Anne Lamott to me because she's just a great writer, both on spirituality and on like love and self-love and confidence. Um, so I was like that, I was like, that's one of my favorite authors. And he was like, okay, let's do that one. But that book doesn't come out till March. So we decided a different book on climate change. And like, I'm <laughs> great. I'm, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pumped for that. Like, I'm so, it's so cool to meet someone. And again, I who knows where it's going, you. but like to meet someone who's down to read a book on love or climate change, like, cool. I care about both those topics pretty deeply. So let's go. So we're reading that book. I freaking love you. I'm so glad y'all are, are reading a book about climate change yeah. together. <laughs> I just feel like that's actually pretty good. Cause like going deep in a love book with like a guy who just He meeting. said, he was like, I think this could bring up like com good conversation. Totally. And I was like, yeah. But you climate change do, like could conversation too. cards. Yeah. As it, you can yeah. do that. So we, he's in Florida right now for like some investor meeting or something. Um, so we were supposed to meet on Friday for the first time, but, but we were just like, I never, I know I sometimes go fast, but I never like message someone like him. Like it's just felt different. I don't know where it's going to go, but he, uh, he was like, would you want to get dinner tonight? I'm doing his accent. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And so you are getting dinner tonight. No, so we got dinner oh, Monday night. Went to Mercado. And that was the same thing where like, I got there at six. We didn't even look at our phones till nine. I love that. I know. And he doesn't drink, which is really amazing. So it was like a sober date, which I loved. Uh -huh. It sounds like he's a guy, and we've kind of talked about this before, like sometimes you're in the past, you – Allowed guys in that you knew really weren't your guy, yeah. but you're scared of the guys that actually are what you want. Yeah. How does this guy kind of? It scares the shit out of me. Oh, that's because he. Because you actually, he's a type of guy that you would want to be with for sure. <sighs> yeah. Oh, wow. Again, I don't know him well enough to know that, right? But, like, yeah. I think one mistake that we make in dating is we fill in the gaps with what we, when, when we just meet someone we only know what we know about them. And so all of the gaps of what we don't know about them, we tend to romanticize it. Or we plug in like what we know from the past. It's like, oh, he's like this. Well, then he's going to be this way. We plug True. in. True. Yeah. Yeah. And that can either hurt us or make us like in this weird fantasy relationship. And I've definitely count, been there. Or for me, I'm like, or count them out completely. Yeah. You cut them out. Yeah. I dive in. This is, yeah. that should be the name of the podcast yeah. <laughs> episode. Like Hannah goes slow, Nora goes fast. And yeah. somewhere in the middle would be good, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, but uh, so I keep be just being like, Nora, like, yes, I'm just proud of myself that I'm not diving in it um, blindly. And I'm just being like, hey, it's cool, but who knows? And I'm just trusting this journey. I'm so, I'm so excited. I am too. This is fun. Yeah, I'm excited too. Oh my gosh, so much has happened. Yeah, a lot has happened. A British man, I love it. Oh my gosh! Oh, also, so he like has this CEO job, but he's like, it's been nice, but eventually I'm gonna want to do something else. Like, so what? he's like, he's don't like, tell me that he wants to live on a farm. He wants no. to buy a house in Italy or Portugal um, or somewhere in Europe. But we both really love Italy, like that. We made it really clear. By the way, guys, as you're listening to this, my big dream. Um, is to have in, a house in Italy. Is to have a house in Italy and to buy a pretty big house in Italy so that I can host my retreats. I, I do like women's leadership retreats um, and I pay these hotels a lot of freaking money um, and the profit isn't high. So I'm like, what if I had a house where I could have way more of like my own aesthetic and just bring the profit into the house and rent it out as a um, – wedding venue as a retreat venue for my own retreats and other people's retreats like and just really make that energy of that space special because even some hotels like the energy is just a little stuffy or like you don't feel fully safe like I want it to be just like in nature beautiful all organic food no seed oils like oh I freaking love you just, <laughs> so we're like totally different like, yeah we are different because I'm like 
Do you know how much that's going to cost? Do you feel like you're going to have to be there the whole time? You're going to have to find a staff that are they going to speak English? Like, I, but I and love like, that you dream. Go. I love it. I, yeah. I like want more of that. But I think I think I can do it because now I just I mean who knows about this guy again? But <laughs> now I just met this guy. We're getting married and from part of in Italy. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. he said to me, he's like, yeah, my dream is to buy a house somewhere in Europe probably Italy and host men's retreats there. That's what he said. And I was like, excuse me? Like, okay. That's pretty cool. What's going on? I don't know, but something good. Something good. Yay. Woo! Okay. Um, Is thank you guys. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for just like listening to us, like have an update. Yeah. I want to hear your guys' updates. If you can, <laughs> I don't know. If, if, so just send some DMs to uh, Enora about your updates. Honestly, and- please. That's what I do for a living. I love hearing about people's lives. Or like comment below. I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> comment below. <laughs> comment below. <laughs> Click on link. Yeah. And, and tell totally. us about your love life. Genuinely. Like I'm not just saying that. I, but honestly, you totally should. I'm not in the space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hannah's not a coach. I'm not a coach. Um, no, I'm like, I'm dealing with a lot of shit. But Nora seems like she's doing great right now. So go ahead and talk to her. <laughs> Please do. I can't wait to hear your story and celebrate you. Oh my gosh. No, I, I love you. Thank I love you so you much for coming on. This was fun. It was nice to like not have to like prep or worry about what I was going to say and just do this with you. Hannah and I prepped this morning at 8.30 via voice And the memo. prep was just, hey, so there's no prep. We're just going to talk, okay? <laughs> and don't tell me any more about your what's going on so we can just talk about it yeah. with everyone. So. And I was like, let's just have fun. Yeah, it yeah. was fun. It was fun. I love you. I love you. Bye. Bye. Thank you guys so much for listening to the episode. Better Tomorrow is produced by me, Hannah Brown, and Legos Creative. Our producer is Andrew Stalmer. Our show is recorded, engineered, and edited by the Legos Creative team. Remember to follow Better Tomorrow wherever you get your podcast so you don't miss the next episode. And don't forget to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps and shows your support. You can follow me on socials at Hannah Brown, and you can stay updated on all things Better Tomorrow on our Instagram at Better Tomorrow and our TikTok Better Tomorrow podcast. Mm-hmm.